Hey guys, so in this uh, video, I'll explain a problem that I have faced quite often related to submit buttons. Now let me explain to you what this issue was. So here we have a form and the issue that you used to uh, face in many a times is that on filling this form, when you press the submit button twice, it used to save the form twice. So in case it's an update, it, here it's an update. In case it's an addition, when you press it very quickly twice, it used to pay, pay, uh, save it twice. For this demonstration, I've added a small lag, which I'll get rid of now. And this still works extremely well. This, this is a technique which I've been facing quite a bit in the past, but here's a very reliable um, way that I believe works perfectly. So here I've, I have no delay in this process. Just quickly press save, you know, add a new stuff and you know, form created, form updated and then nothing here. And you know, if I press it again, nothing, nothing happening there. All right. And let's see how this works. So first thing, also let's look at the data here for this uh, contacts. You should not find anything that is empty and then nothing is repeated. So that's all that shows that all of the, this, this is working fine. So here's what I've done. So in my workflow on clicking the save button, I have, uh, and actually in the save for the save button, I've added a state called processing. Yes or no. If the state is pro and by default, it is no, if the state is processing, then the text changes to processing the co background color changes to give you a user some indication and the element is no longer clickable. Now, the reason we are doing this in, in a much more planned manner is because in JavaScript, it's a asynchronous, um, uh, platform, uh, programming language. And if these events get triggered off very quickly before this, kicks in, the events for saving will be, will, uh, will be triggered. So let's see how this works now that we have not, what is the workaround to do this? So first on saving and, and, and here's the logic, regardless of how many times and how quickly the events are triggered, each of the events is expected to perform an action. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the event click event trigger this workflow, which depends on the state that we had set related to processing. So if the processing state is no, then this workflow travels through. If it's yes, there is no click. Uh, there's no flow getting triggered. Now let us say the events reach here at the same time for argument's sake. Even in that case, one of this event is going to set the processing first. So regardless of what happens, the second workflow is not going to find the condition valid. And it's very simple thereafter. Now that we've done this uh, state checking on this workflow, by default, it is no. So first you come here, you immediately, immediately set it to yes. And you set it to yes only when it's no. It doesn't make sense that you set it to yes, which when it's yes, which would happen in the second case in case it moved forward, you would not, you, even if it moves forward, you won't find it being able to set this processing to yes, because it needs to check that the processing is always no. A pros pause action I added for sake of demonstration. This is as good as not, not existing since the value is zero. And then you trigger and trigger a custom event called save contact. And now in the save contact, we've added a national check. So the save contact is valid only when the processing is yes. So you have some event under process, depending on the form, which is either an existing form or an, or a non-existing form, or in other words, a new form, which is the only two states a form can have. If there is an existing form, then we have a modify action. And if we have a, a, new form, then we have a creation, a creating action. The reason we have addition first is we want this to be, once you create a form, you can always edit it or it's available for edit. 
But if you have a modified form, it is not available for creation because it's it's not empty. So therefore, we do the modifying action first. And, and for this, we do it only when this is empty. Uh, for creating a window, do it's empty. For modifying when it's not empty, then we have alerts triggering off based on the previous two actions. And then we have the reset. The reset happens only when it's either the creation or the addition is successful. And even the reset form are moved to a moved to a custom event. And that event is here. So when you reset it, you reset all the form fields and you also set the processing back to no. So your form is ready to take the next request. So here in demonstration, we have an existing form. You click it, it's updated. You have a new form ready to go. Hope that helps. This is a teething problem that we had with respect to having a double save, but now it should be taken care in this uh, process.